you. Um, this is Ashley from Ashley Ann Scans. And today we're going to do a um, short fiber dem demonstration um, on fiber preparation, fiber, how it gets to the um, part that we spin it. And um, it's, it's a fiber 101 from start to finish. But what we do is we start with, um, we start the day after shearing preparing our fiber for the next year because uh, the sheep's health is number one important on what kind of fiber they'll be producing. So um, their vaccinations are important, their housing is important to give them some protection from the elements and all that protects the wool. We know wool is durable but the sunlight will bleach the tips of the wool. Um, rain, a lot of rain and no cover will cause problems for the sheep, therefore you'll lose your wool, or you won't um, have a wool that's very good. They get wool breakage. So basically, fiber preparation is all year long. So we work ourselves up to uh, shearing day. Shearing day, the sheep are put in the barn, prepared, no food before, because you want to make them comfortable, no food before they're going to be shorn. And um, our main concern is the sheep. And our sheep shear comes in. I, we don't shear them at our farm. It's backbreaking work. And um, so we have sheep shear come in for our sheep and for our llamas. They come in and um, shave, the sh shave it off with uh, either clippers or the electric shavers. I've had sheep shearers that use both. The electric shavers are better, but your old time sheep shearers like to use the clippers, the old clippers that you see. This is basically. What it's, this is an alpaca fleece, we're showing it today. And this is what it looks like when it comes directly off the animal. Um, there's not much chafe in it because the next step that we do after it comes off the animal is put it onto a um, skirting table, which is a big frame with screen. And we skirt the edges, anything around the belly, around the back end, anything that's dirty or mad that gets pulled off and thrown away. And then I kind of just, oh, there's a piece of hay, this is what we don't want in it. I kind of just go like this with handfuls of fiber and hope all the little shape falls out. Another way to help protect your animals is coating them. A lot of people believe in coating, a lot of people don't. I coat my sheep because I have larger animals, the alpaca, the llama, eating over them. And so all that shape falls into their uh, fiber. So I hope mine, but a lot of people don't. It's not necessary to, but it also will help with that bleaching of the tips. So if you have dark sheep and um, those tips bleach out, when you blend that, you're going to get a lighter color than you thought you were going to have. So we've shorn the sheep or the alpaca, and recently, for the past six or seven months, I've been totally hand processing my fibers myself because I've been spinning fibers that I don't want completely blended into a smooth uh, roving. I've been spinning fibers that I can knit things like this with, where the um, fibers poke out. So um, I've been hand doing all of my uh, fiber prep myself. So the next step would be, after the skirting, is to wash the, the fleece. Now, um, people, you know, you're washing wool, and this goes for your wool sweaters too. Um, Say, you know how you'll ruin it. You won't ruin it unless you have a change of temperature and agitation. So basically, if you were gonna, what I'm gonna tell you with this, you can do with a wool sweater. Um, but don't hold me responsible. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> In case you make a mistake. But you, what I do is I use a bigger bag than this. I just brought this for the demo. I, I stuff the fiber in and I'll fill my sink, a pretty big sink, um, with hot water, as hot as I can get from the tap. We actually turn it up to very hot because it will cut grease, the lanolin that's in the animal. So we turn it up very high and um, they have some really good products out there for washing fleece. Um, and they all work, but I use Dawn because it cuts grease and it, it wor and it works. But there are some very good unicorn products. That I'm not familiar with all of them, Euclid. And they all work very well too, but I find I'm always running out of them. Dawn, I can run to the store to get easily. So you put the fiber in the bag and it goes into the water and uh, you kind of just 
just squish it around and you don't want to agitate too much but squish it down and make sure it gets wet you want it all the way wet through the bag and then yes I leave it in the water well um, I leave it in the water until I can put my hand in the water without a rubber glove on right at that point I don't want it to get any cooler that's my method because again I don't want to change the temperature so at that point it soaks in the water it's absolutely filthy because these animals have been out for a year and they unpack them they'll roll all day long in sand or whatever they can find so it's pretty dirty your first washing then I drain the sink because it's in a bag I don't have to worry about the fiber going down the sink and then I refill it again with hot water and do the same thing now depending on your fleece and what kind of animal you have is going to depend on how many times you have to do it some animals are kept on pasture green grass all year long and you may only have to do this three times I my animals are, are on more of dry lot which is a lot of dirt so I have to do this three to five times what what I'm explaining to you filling it up letting it go down filling it up letting it out then you do one final rinse and um, you, you want to get the water as clean as possible, but you might see it a little cloudy. I stop there because I'm going to wash it again when I turn it into yarn. So, you know, and I, I don't want to over scour it, over prepare it. Um, so I'll stop there and then let it, let the water out. Now it's in the bag. So I'll squeeze it in the bag because I haven't changed the temperature. So I can um, bring it out. After I bring it out, I will lay it in a big towel and fold it up and squish it down. Then it goes outside on a big screen like the skirting table spread out to dry in the sun. Now that can take, again, depending on the fleece, some of the, some sheep fleeces are big and dense. I can take up to three days to dry in the sun. Um, or an alpaca fleece can dry in a day. Um, it has to do with the dynam diameter of the fiber, etc. So then the next step is um, after we wash it, it comes out that was the, <laughs> comes out clumpy and clean. See how clumpy it is? I couldn't spin that. I'm sorry, I take it out of the bag and spread it out and dry it in the sun. Yeah, spread it as, as much as you can, you know, get it apart. No, not for a day. No, no. Then after it's washed, it's pretty clumpy like that, and obviously you can't spin it like that, but it's clean. It smells clean, and it's, um, you know, there's nothing coming out of it, and it's nice and clean. And after that, we um, card it. Well, we, I, depending on, again, the, the fiber, I pick it or card it. Now, if I was going to do something like this, I would pick it. It's, um, I didn't bring a picker because it's kind of a dangerous um, tool. It's got nails in it, and the arm swings back and forth, and nails stick up. So the fiber is put in there, and it goes back and forth like this, and it just picks it apart nicely. And if there was any other shape left in it, that'll fall down, and you're not going to have anything left. Plus, it opens the fiber getting ready to make it a little bit easier to carve. So my way of carding is a drum carder or a hand carder. If I'm going to do small batches that I want to spin right away and I might want to blend something, I'll actually use the hand carders just because I like to. I'll sit in front of the TV with a nice clean batch of fleece. And Ashley's going to show you how, how it's carded. These are the hand carders. You want to hold one up and then they have, um, they're, they're sharp too. And then you card heel to heel. You start with the heel back and forth. So you grab things on the edge and pull them down. Put one on your knee and then we'll go, yeah, give some support. It's hard to hold it up when you're pressing. But if you hold that up now to them, you see how the fibers are going in the same direction? That's what you want to get it to spin. You need them to go all in the same direction then rather than try to spin it like this. Then, when you take it off, you can too. We, um, we just peel it up nicely off and roll it into what is called roll logs. Now, this is a roll log and it's ready to spin. See how nicely that'll come out? And it's all going in the same direction. It's beautiful. And 
and um, you get a pretty big bag of them. This is a bag of all roll locks, all ready to spin, and it'll spin a nice um, yarn. Now, to use a drum carter, that would be a little quicker, and um, oh, the whole part of it, using the drum carter would go quicker for blending, and uh, you get a whole different, a drum carter is a drum with teeth, just like this, and you feed, it, it rotates around, and there's a, a little plate in the front, and you feed the fiber into it, and it cards it, and onto the drum, and when you've um, done enough, you peel it off the drum. And this one, I blended some silk in with the same alpaca, and this is how it comes off the drum. And this has some silk and some uh, angeline fiber in it for glitter. Um, and this is all ready to spin. You can tear strips off and begin to spin it. And this weighs about um, four ounces. So you can get uh, a pretty much close to a four ounce bat off a good sized drum carter. Then it's totally ready to be spun. So you know what, I'll take a piece of this. <clears throat> But that's, that is the preparation that a shepherd is with your fiber artist. Um, yeah, and this is a nice little strip to spin it, to start spinning. And this little piece of my hand, believe it or not, you know, will last a long time. It's gonna make quite a few yardage right now of a uh, yard. Four ounces, most, a, a lot of regular spinning wheels are have four ounce bobbins. So a full bobbin spun like worst to weight would four ounces would be enough. So any of these backs that you see around that weigh at least four ounces will give you a full bobbin. Now I would have to fill this bobbin up. And if I wanted a two-ply yarn, I would have to fill a second bobbin up. And I'd have the two bobbins sitting next to me on a, a stand that's called a lazy cake. And the lazy cake um, just hold from there so that I could take the two pieces of yarn, put them together, and ply them. And then the finished product would be the skein of yarn like this. Now, we talked about um, sheep, alpaca, llama, and their fiber preparation. The same thing for it for both, um, most any animal except the Angora rabbit has a little bit of a different fiber preparation. And Ashley, um, from Ashley Men's Hands, she raises the Angora rabbits for their wool and makes yarn. And she'll tell you a little bit about the preparation of an Angora rabbit wool. Right. Of course, the rabbits are our biggest concern to make sure that they're happy and healthy. It's a little easier. You don't have to do all that processing. You can spring pretty much right off the rabbit itself. And, um, Usually about eight to ten weeks, depending on how long you want the fiber. It's a lot of fun. I'm learning how to tail spin the Angora rabbit, which is very unique and very beautiful. The way that the fiber belts up after you process it, it's very easy to do. The rabbits are a lot of fun. You don't have to chase them around to give them shots like you do with llamas and the alpacas. It's a wonderful venture that my husband and I are really enjoying. We have um, quite a few, and they're a lot of fun. Actually, she mentioned the tail spinning. Um, she brought some yarn. I haven't done tail spinning with the Agora fiber. She brought some yarn that is tail spun. It's over page 1502 if you want to take a look at it. And we have a lot of different yarns over there spun in different ways. If you um, stop by and have any questions about it, if you consider spinning, maybe we can answer some of your questions. But basically, that is um, that is the preparation of a fleece. It's, it's some work, but you enjoy doing it. You know, I, I like to have my hands in the fleece. I like the lanolin part, the grease. You know, I don't mind the wet wool smell. I, Things as a shepherdess, you like all that, but you know, some people not for them, you know. So, you can send it out to a mill You're, if you don't want to do all that. Yep, Wednesday Dale. These are Wensley Dale locks, these are from a farm in Cal these. I don't have these sheep, these are from a farm in California, Namaste Farm. She raises absolutely gorgeous 
Wensleydale sheep with locks that are up to 14 inches long. So I get a lot of locks from her to make these kind of things or to mix it with my um, um, fiber. But back tip, you don't want to do all that work, all, all that work. You can send it out to a mill. There's mills all over the country. There's probably one close to you. And have it, they will wash it, pick it, wash it, card it into roving, and it comes back to you like this, ready to spin. So, depends on which road you like, or you can do half, you know, a little bit. Before I really got into the hand preparation, I used to send it all out. But I would keep one piece a year to hand prepare myself just because I really liked it. And then I really started liking it a lot, so I keep more and more at home and do it. So it's quite fulfilling to start from off the animal, kissing his nose, shearing him, feeding him, you know, and right to the end to, until you're wearing them. So I hope we gave you some information. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Yes. Well, it doesn't need to go out to be processed, but you could do that if you wanted to blend it. I like to blend the Agora with the alpaca. When a rabbit has not been sure for a while, it's called blowing the coat, and you can usually tell that by just petting them and handling them, it kind of falls off. It's not very healthy for the rabbit. Their stomach doesn't process that fiber. We try to give them papaya to help. So you want to really keep the rabbit well-groomed. It is a labor of love. Some of them absolutely love it, and others just fight you. But it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's very easy to, to work with because you do not need to process it if you don't want to. You don't have to card it either. I mean, it can be, no. You can take that um, fiber from the rabbit and just go like this and get it all going in the right direction, same direction, and spin from there. It, it, you don't have to card it. Uh, or you can card it and roll the roll out. You know, but they're like a cat. They're, they're just like a cat. You know, your cat keeps himself that clean, so does a rabbit. They actually smell good. They um, they don't eat meat, they're just um, herbivores. Of course, you're talking to us who like to smell a wet bowl. Yeah, and, you know, there's too many that smell great. <laughs> yourself in the farm again.